The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Everyone, Basil Chapman. Yeah, this is the uh, 19th of Wednesday, the 19th of October, and we're looking at the Dow down 30 at 30,494. A couple of things we need to look at because the the pattern that's formed is a pattern that we've at least for subscribers to my opening call we're very familiar with. Because every once in a while, there's a there's a chart formation that sees a very quick and sharp pullback, and then a rally attempt, and that rally attempt kind of stalls, comes back and retests that left side low. Let me put this over here. I do this almost every day. I've been showing it. I, I'm all about three patterns: straight up, straight down. That's one. Cup formation, that's two. Arch formation, that's three. And a combination of one and two and one and three. As simple as that. But you can see this is red because when the arch formation fails, especially if it only goes to one or two peaks higher, peak A or B, I alphabetize them A to G on the way up, A to G on the way down, uppercase on the way up, meaning uh, you're in, a, in an uptrend, downtrend on the way down, lowercase. But if it takes out the left side low, how it does that and how quickly it comes back is really important. Then if there's a, a break and a close above this arch formation, that is extremely important because there's a pattern that I talk about that says the lowercase h can go to a lowercase m and stall within like a rectangle. With, in other words, the border of that arch is the high and the border of the low is kind of the low. And then it just trades, and it's a sideways trading. It means that if you identify it, you can say sideways trading range. When you get to the top, short. When you get to the bottom, buy. And at some point, you're going to be wrong. But until then, that pattern will hold. But if there's a close above, so here we are. This arch formation that was made going to the high in mid-September, peak A, became an A- minus because not only did it plunge below the 31,182 level in the Dow, it went even further. There was a little one right here, and it went down sharply. But then the technical started to improve, and there was a much bigger arch formation. I call this the dread, this pattern here, the dreaded H, because if it takes out that left side low, whew, you got to be careful. On the right, if it's the green, because it's straight up, and then it pulls back and it takes out that left side high, it's the same particulars that you look at, but that can be very bullish. Let's take this away now, and we'll see how many arch formations failed in the weekly chart. This is the beginning of another potential arch formation, and there's a very large one in the in the monthly chart. Don't have to talk about that now. Wait until the end of the month. But in the meantime, the Dow has had this big move from 28,660 to yesterday's high. Oh, I typed it in, but I forgot to put it here. Of 30,837. <laughs> I mean, come on. In Four sessions? Well, it's pulling back mildly today. PG is helping at Procter & Gamble. Good earnings report, I guess. And um, what we're looking at is the MACD has rallied very nicely. The stochastic is finally getting close to 80%. That unbalanced volume is still very weak. And that weakness says to me, remember, unbalanced volume is the running total of whatever you're following on that on the particular bar that you're counting. Uh a minute or weekly or monthly, doesn't matter. But if the price you're following closes up, you add it to the running total. And if it closes down, you subtract it. Well, this is the total right here. And it says that even with a spectacular move to the upside and actual volume start to improve a little bit, what we're looking at is <clears throat> the actual unbalanced volume is not. It's kind of weak. And that just says to me, we're not quite ready for prime time. Chapman Wave inside wedge, target resistance line, took it out yesterday, closed under it. Oh, let me mention. So in the Chapman Wave methodology, there's a technique that I developed years ago. We, I, I can't remember if Tom interviewed Richard Arms. I think he did. He's interviewed everybody over the years. And... Um, 
I remember following uh, the arms index, but I I never always understood exactly how Richard Arms used his own index. I didn't really bother actually because I use it only in a particular way. If there was a price that that intraday on the trend went above a certain level, it implied to me over the years I, I got to understand that this is the way it worked. That within two days, regardless of whether the market went up or down, whatever, the S and P should have a nine to eleven point. Now that number is starting to increase because of the big volatility, but it doesn't matter. It says a strong move in the futures should help the S and P over the next coming two sessions. But if it's very low, under a certain number, then invariably the Dow. Let me just go to this right here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Invariably. I don't even think I put it in yesterday. Uh, okay, there's the short-term trading index. And I have to cross it out yesterday, even though the, the it, it implies that the Dow should go negative, usually early in the morning, but it could be any time during the day. And then there'll be another rally. Well, uh, the turn was very low on Monday. And yesterday, the futures was screaming. The Dow went up 600 points. And then twice it came down under 200. It dropped over 400 points. So technically, that says that's fine. What a fantastic indicator! I have to put a little X through it because it did not go negative, right? The X, even though it was fantastic, and yesterday that there was a low number as well, and so far, and last night the futures screamed to the upside. I thought, oh man. And it happens often when you, uh, after options expiration, the day of or the day after we get the, the short-term trading index has a very low number. Not always, but very often, often enough to include it as a te technique that I use. Um, well, today it worked. I couldn't believe last night I thought, oh, it's going to miss it. We're up, uh, what was it, 30-something points in the futures overnight. And then it, what happens? Whoosh, we come down again. So this is a fantastic indicator. It has a 90-something percent accuracy rate. The other one has an even higher accuracy rate. But uh, I've never made a black box to sell as something that you could put on your, your platform because I suspect at some point those numbers are going to change. So anyway, this is the way it is, and it's worked today. So now what we're doing is we've had the sell-off. Is there going to be intrinsic buy? Well, Look at the MACD, the daily MACD. It's improving. The histogram has been strong for about, a, actually, it's almost two weeks. And yet, we still made a lower low in the H pattern. But look how quickly it reverted from that uh, low that was made Thursday to that huge up candle, then that horrible session. This is a different thing. I'll show you in the other indices that it's a different pattern altogether. The Dow has been the strongest indice, and I think it's because it's got the Dow 30. It's not the Dow Industrials anymore. It's just the Dow 30, and those 30 really make up. I love the mix of the Dow 30. Maybe there's one too many financials. Doesn't matter. All right, so the stochastic is now very close to 80%. I need that to get a buy signal. <clears throat> Possible upgrade immediately to a buy mode. At this point, I have, I have to wait for the day to finish. I think I'm going to get a buy signal. And the online phone is it's not good. But for the first time yesterday, the nine period crossed over the 14 period moving average. That is a very good sign. So the bias now, I still say, is to the upside. Uh, we are along the down. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 22, SB's down eight. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so basically what we're looking at here is that the technicals are starting to improve on the daily chart of the Dow. The S&P was a little weaker because the I typed in the wrong place again. Every day I go to the S&P and I type in somewhere on the platform but in the wrong place. There we go. SBX.x. S&P, because of that very ugly candle on Friday, going more than half down the distance of the entire green bar of Thursday and then couldn't make it up on Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, Monday, but had a fabulous session yesterday. This is a leg B. And in this case, look how far the pink is still away from the, the black. That's the nine-period moving average is still way under the 14-period moving average, but it pretty much will, it should, cross positive by Friday, maybe. Uh, in the meantime, stochastic is still way down at 56, and the MACD is just good. So this is, it hasn't taken out the left side high, and that was the high in the S&P just under 38 in the 30. 3790s. Here it is, the 3714. It's got a long way to go. And that weekly chart, you can see, it did do a 161 uh, for, um, decline. And then just under it, it went and there at the 3491 area and then rallied. And that monthly chart, well, we'll talk about the monthly chart later in the next week, maybe. But what we're looking at this particular point is that the SP is lagging, <coughs> but it is improving. The QQQ is exactly the same thing. It was even worse on Thursday. And then Monday, okay, yesterday was a very good day, but it closed near the low of the day. And today it's it's just above the uh, the black 14 period exponential moving average. Look at the distance. And this is, it's giving us time. Now, if you think of it this way, if the stochastic goes under 20%, especially if it goes under 10%, if, it's, if the market starts to rally, normally you wouldn't get a major top if this is going to go to a peak a and then a peak b whoops that's a lowercase b that should be an uppercase b um you wouldn't get a top if it's a serious buy signal to buy mode you wouldn't get a top until at least a peak d that would take you to maybe uh 280s we're at 272 right now 284 is the left side high that it has to take out for me to be very convinced that this is a, a market that can go even higher but 
the technicals are improving. They're not great, but they are improving. Look at the IWM, the Russell 2000. This is, this is the small caps. The, uh, this is a Russell 2000. IWM is a symbol trading at 172.82 down to $1.32. That did go to a peak B, and that was over the previous arch high, like the Dow. So in, in purely technical terms, not the monthly, not the weekly, but the daily, as has happened so often, the IWM can make fabulous chart formations, but the bigger tide still hasn't said that the small caps – the Russell 2000 small caps are able to lead. They might participate, but they haven't led. I would love to see them lead. Um, I would love because that would imply that some of the screamers that I have for subscribers to my opening call, for instance, uh, I have a whole seg segment that is where stocks under $10, I call them screamers because if you're able to get them exactly right, um, then – Intraday, it has to work almost immediately. I, I could have done it one position. I would have had to buy it lower down than the close yesterday. I decided I wanted it because I liked it, and it was in an area that I think is going to participate okay here, kind of insurance type thing. And at the same time, I decided I want some part of it, but if it fails, I could buy it another part down. So I split the position, and I said to buy it now. One of the problems I've had for some time is that some some people can't trade out of market hours. But I believe almost all the platforms give you the opportunity to do that. And these days, I don't know why anyone, any of the platforms wouldn't. So um, I have to look at the price. I send out my newsletter between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. The opening call is, the, uh, is my newsletter and the traders corner is where I have all the positions. And I have to put the position that I want. And if you can get it prior to the market opening, sometimes that's fantastic. Now, another thing I want you to also mention in the same vein is that over the last, now it's about a year. What are we into October? I know actually it's more than a year. It's about a year and a quarter that mar the market has participated from about six in the morning, six, somewhere between 5.30 and 6.30, where you could possibly get the day is low and hold that position all the way through the rest of the day. I mean, the, today might be, the, might be that position. Uh, let me just check here on the E-mini. Uh, let's see, A, B, this is now C, D, and there's a brand new move to the upside. Yeah, we've made this cup formation. But if you're looking at, when did I do that? Oh, right. Oh, here it is. If you're looking at, the low, let me go to the 10 minute chart. That's a better. Now, the, the low was made at 9.30, was it this morning? Uh, 9 o'clock? No, just about 10 o'clock. There was a sudden move down in the E mini. And now we've started a brand new move to the upside. This is a now leg A. And I've got all the FIB numbers in here, everything. I've got the Chapman wave uh, pattern that we're looking at. It's gone above the 200 period exponential moving average. Dow is now up 130. SP is up six, kind of lagging. So I, all I wanted to say is that there have been times, although there was, uh, let me see, was it yesterday? So that's in the evening. No, no there it is. So that is 5 o'clock. Yeah, look at those big rallies. Look at this rally that occurred at 5.40 on the, on the 22nd. That was yesterday. Look at that move. I mean, from 6 in the morning, uh, around about, what was that? That was at... 37.23, all the way to a P.E. top. And remember, I, I did this online. Uh, I showed this live yesterday that there was a left side, right side difference between the vertical lines. It was very strong at that peak D, but it made a slightly higher high. The technicals were way weaker and a pullback. So I'm, I'm just saying that there have been changes. I like to account for those changes in my tech, all the different, my myriad techniques that I've developed over the years. And one of those says that, yes, I know a lot of people say that novices trade between 9.30 and uh, 10.30. I, I don't know about that because we've had some spectacular moves. And basically, you could have your entire trading day getting the high or the low early in the morning, 6 to 7 o'clock in the morning. So I just wanted to say that things do change, and I like to change with it as much as I can. 
So let's get back to our story here. So we're looking at the IWM, participating a little bit today. Now, this is going to be a big deal. Gold has pulled back very sharply. It's got like the Eiffel Tower move straight up, straight peak A, and it could become an A minus if it fails and goes under 16, around about 1620. And it's coming down sharply. And I've been saying it's the same pattern that we're looking at in the weekly chart and the monthly chart made a left side high back in July, August or so, 2021, up in the 2100 area. Pulled back sharply, made a cup formation, and then made a retracement back to the high under 21 in 2022. Uh, I think it was about February or so, uh, February or March, and uh, now February, I think. And now we've made a lower low. And look at the technicals, how weak they were in the monthly chart. I'll be back in a moment because we also want to look at this at silver and we want to look at the dollar. Dollar is up strongly, up 80, 86 ticks at 112 ticks. I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the gold report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So this is what I was saying yesterday. And also when I was interviewed by Tom, I was saying selectivity is really important here because you could have an individual stock and you become vulnerable to earnings news or something like that. And it just at this particular point, Maybe for some people, it's a little bit better getting the generic ETF, and then you can have time to start looking at stocks. Because I think if we make a new recovery high in the next couple of days, that really, is, at least for me, is saying there's a really good chance that this market is going to now continue with high, hopefully higher lows and higher highs. That's the way I'm looking at it. Then you can start. But look, Gen Generac Holdings is generators. Makes a peak D in the monthly chart in the 500s. And today it has a little bit of a pullback. It's down 28 points at 119, down 20%. And this is every year, I think, Generac, oh, Generators, surely uh, this should be 
it's uh, winter times coming you know power outages etc and look this is sometimes the fundamentals or your assessment doesn't quite correspond look at this monthly chart it cannot close uh, once in a year uh, once in two years has it closed above no no, no i shouldn't say that just a few times over the last year has it closed above the weekly 14 period exponential moving average most of the time it's below it all right so i just wanted to get that out the way so i said that i look at at look at the, at silver Silver is not as bad as gold. Look, silver is holding very well, but they do tend to go as a, as a, as a sector. They do go together as the metals. But I'm, I'm kind of impressed at uh, silver holding like this. It's down the 15 cents. It's 1845. Uh, I'm looking at it and saying, unless it, it closes under 17.93 ish, um, so far it's holding quite nicely. So we got to look at each one separately, and let's do that with the dollar. The dollar is trading up very nicely. It's up 86 cents at 112.87. It's still long. We've only taken little bits off, and I just, I mean, the dollar is the currency of, of, of the 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 huge uh, volumes, and that means that countries and big financial institutions put money in. The currencies and the dollar is a favorite. USD, JPY. This is the yen. <clears throat> um, I can't believe it. This is one of those cases. So you see every green bar since about uh, early October. Every single day has been a green bar with higher highs. It's made a single leg, a uh, single leg. It's made a leg C to the upside. And let's see again today. Now, the question is, well, is it overbought? Well, the, you know, it's like you're spinning the coin. USD JPY, the US dollar currency pair price, doesn't know that it's overbought. It doesn't know that it's oversold. It just is the price. The MACD is good. Stochastics flat at 97%. We always say flatten in the 90% area. That's what you want to see. Every every technical book on, on uh, technical analysis should say above 80% is good, above 85 is better, and above 90% is fabulous and flat. The moment it just pops up and then comes back down, that's not a good sign. But this is fabulous, and the MACD is good, way over the nine-period moving average, which is way above the 14. So to get the yen to become a sell and then a, a sell signal and then a sell mode, I think 140, you'd have to be closing under 146. It's a 149.5, uh, uh, 0.6. So you uh, actually even 144. So there's a lot to be done, and it'll be just sudden news. And I drew in the verticals. Look, the verticals are still very strong in the weekly chart. And it's a leg F. There could be an alternate count, F slash B. That would be un unbelievable for the yen. And then if you look at, U at the EUR USD, uh -uh. that is the exact opposite coming down. Let me just refresh that. There it goes. All uh, right. Look at that. Stuck in the range, hasn't broken out, hasn't broken down, but way in the weekly chart, way in the lower range, and the monthly chart. So that's that's a problem. So now we want to go to the TLT. The TLT made a lower low. I'm calling this a leg G. Could be an alternate count. Uh, it could be G slash C. In fact, that's what I normally do when I get a G. If I check it out, this does become a G slash C, lowercase c. And the MACD is... Weak, very weak. The stochastic's at 80%, and look how long it's been under 20%. That's the exact opposite of uh, above 80%. So this is very weak. And the monthly chart, the weekly chart is at 3.79 in the stochastic. It's saying on a purely numbers-related basis, it is so close to some attempt at a move to the upside. And if you look at the monthly chart, it's at 9% in the stochastic, looking very, very weak. So the dollar still is the lead currency. Now, I want to go to the exact opposite, the TBT. I had a question, could I do some analysis on TBT? If I'm just looking at it on a weekly basis, I'm saying, gee, that's kind of over, overboard, isn't it? But wait a minute, the MACD is good. Stochastic is flat at 94%. It, or it actually hasn't even begun to flatten out. And the monthly chart is in leg D. It's above the previous resistance in the 30 area. Here it is at 35.15. And in the weekly chart, it is a G slash C. That's because I decided that there was a chance you could call this an instant restart because the low of the week 
uh, of the 29th of April, 23.43 was the low. And then the low on that, it ran up to a peak F at 29.56 and then plummeted down. And the low on was 23, look, 23.34, the week of the 5th of August. And you had, of course, I should have remembered, 23.43. So it went lower. So I have no choice but to say this is either, I can't treat this as a C because it went lower and lower means you've negated it. This is either, I don't know, is it possible to even put this in that the, the weekly and the TBT, ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF is only at A. Now I'm going to call, just for the moment, I'm going to call it a G uh, because once you take out that left side low, you have to restart. And that's the reason why in the S&P, we, we took out the left side low, and I have to call that a peak B. The SPY peak B, the uh, SP, was it U, what was the, there was a dividend one. All, all the S&Ps uh, are at um, a peak B. That's because the low of March 2020 went to 2191, below the 2346 low of December of 2018. Remember when the Fed was raising rates and we went down there? So this is, um, I have no choice. And it could fail, but I am calling it a B. And everything else in the monthly charts has a notation above D, a D or higher. And therefore, you can get some kind of a down arrow saying, okay, that's a sell signal to sell mode. We haven't got them. We've got sell signals, haven't confirmed sell modes yet. So back to the TBT, that takeout of the low on the weekly chart says that this is either a brand new A. Oh, I, 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 remember, what was the guy you said? Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Anyway, pain, pain. Yeah, this is pain. So either it's a G and there's going to be a pullback, we pull back sharp, and even ever underneath it, a peak A, B, C, D that doesn't take out that high. Anything can happen. But rates in the long term are going to be uh, really dependent on this weekly chart. If you look at the US, this is the bonds themselves look it's gone down to a, a low a g slash b what be the oh the tyx let's go to the tyx dot x there we go look at this yeah it's the same thing except that this did not take out the low i go with the root the root is the tyx in this particular instance i should go to the tnx so i just wanted to do that i had a question could i look at it and now we've got to a g slash c in the daily chart of bonds, G, S, C, and uh, I've got the typed in the wrong place. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 98, S&P's up one. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I was asked about Snap in the break. It made a high of 83.34. It had a little bit of a pullback. It went down to the, uh, what was it, 940, 942 area, uh, October the 3rd. Uh, and now it's trading at 11.6. I think these particular stocks have um, a lot of work to be done. The ones that flatten out and then couldn't have a big pop up. They just went sideways. This is the kind of stock that you want to see if you're holding it anywhere in the 10s, 10, 11, maybe 9, anywhere if you can get it in that area. If you just hold it, it was a fantastic company, obviously, one in demand that is on buying. And then it screamed up to the 83 from the uh, from the, uh, single digits, actually, the lower back in March was of uh, 2020 was 789. So um, I think you just have to, if you're just sitting with it and you're prepared to, even at this level, two points down is, you know, you're talking about, you know, it could be 10, 15, 20%, just put it like that. But if you are prepared to sit with it, I, I don't like doing that, but if this is what is in your portfolio and you, you say, okay, I've got it in the low price, you want to just see, you want to just sit there and then out of the blue, some there's some talk, take over, whatever it is, doesn't matter. But you want to see it have a big gap and then not fill that gap, even get into the gap for three sessions afterwards. And that says, whew, finally, it can try to test the high that was made back in July of 16.55, July of 22. But that's it's a rectangle formation and it can go to the top and come back to the bottom and it's just stuck in a range. Um, so just to finish up with the TBT, the TBT, the stochastics at 91%. To get the TBT negative, in other words, to have a change of shorter term to intermediate term from a, a buy mode to a sell signal and then a sell mode, meaning you've upgraded it going, going much lower, that means I think it has to go to 31.50. It's a 36 35.24 right now with a high today of 34.45. Uh, you would have to see that, and that takes time. Either it just it happens because there's a sudden something or other, and it happens in a flash, uh, like the big spike up or the exact reverse, or else you have to be prepared that it's a slow grind to the downside. And all I can say is that I'm, I haven't got anything as a sell signal yet or a buy signal on the TLT. I think I'm getting very close to maybe even attempting to say to some subscribers who are interested in the in the uh, maybe taking a position in the in the treasury bonds that as a bounce it might have a nice percentage bounce but I don't see a major turn just yet. But looking out there are a lot of factors I don't want to talk about it now maybe on Friday I'll have a chance uh, that I that I want to look at and say, what are the chances that a huge chunk of, of everything that the Fed wants has been done? And that even if it's just a mild decrease in inflation, there could be something. I, I'll look at that, but I'm not saying anything yet because we know that once inflation is out the box, I, I mean, it must have been a, eight months, a year ago or so. I remember speaking with Tom in an interview. Um, uh, in his Tom O'Brien show, three to four every afternoon, market days, 
um, and saying, you know, my experience has been whenever the genie is out of the box of inflation, it is really tough to get it back in. There are conditions that could do it, but there are extremely volatile conditions. And I'll talk about that a little later on. But I am saying it's not impossible, but wow. It, it's going to take something really dramatic to do. Now, I wanted to go through this. I had a question about Baba yesterday. This is Alibaba about having puts, you know, on a very short-term basis. I'd say that's fine. But even Alibaba has got this rectangle formation, and that's the lower end of the rung. It's at the lower end of the range. Back in March, I think it was, it was in March, it went to 72. What was that low? 70, 73.28. And now, uh, yesterday it went below, uh, five sessions ago it went to the 70, hmm, 71.40 level. But I think it's getting ready for a little bit of a bounce. So yes, if you got the puts, that's, I don't know, whatever, what, I don't know your trading plan or anything like that. Perfect for yesterday when you said that. Uh, I didn't talk about it because I, I, I knew you saw it a little later on. But Alibaba, Chinese uh, Amazon, basically, uh, Alibaba Group, trading at 73.85, down 249 today. I think the larger trend is down, just as I talk about when I say the FXI. Uh, it's the and look, Alibaba, they, it's exactly the same. And look how uh, the FXI, the iShares China large cap ETF. There's a large cap ETF. It actually changed its name. Years ago, we used to look at the FXI. It was 25, I think, and now it's the large cap ETF. Um, it hasn't taken out the low of four days, five days ago. Yep, five days ago. But it has taken out the weekly low of that February low. So this is, I, I think China's got a real problem. I don't think, I, I, I think the put is probably the side to be on. But I'd also say, manage your trade. Don't get too, don't, don't get too locked in, even though for the past three months or four months, Absolutely locked in was the word. Just right here is where you got to be a little careful. Okay, so now it catches that. A question about XOM, yeah, Exxon Mobil. Nice session today, made a new recovery high. This is a pattern that I'm always so impressed with. Is this a C? Yep, that's a C, and it's gone to leg D. The leg D so far is under the 105.57 high of the week of the 10th of, uh, 10th of June. Just typing. Uh, and what we're looking at here is that it's an F in the in the monthly chart. If it goes above 105.57, I got a feeling I'm going to have to call this an instant restart. I'm not ignoring um, oil at this particular point, although I think oil on the very short term has – it really is making lower lows and lower highs. It's having a tough time. I think that from what everything I re I've read – there is a chance that it could be a very sudden, it's like a like a three or four day rocket ship to the upside if everything I'm looking at unfolds in a negative way. So in the monthly chart, you've got this two cups formation, like a W, a rising W formation. and um, But it's a very quick peak A to B to C to D. When it does that, very often you've got to anticipate there's some kind of a pullback from the D. So ExxonMobil, Trading at 103.40, up 2.50 today. <laughs> Fabulous action. And I think I'd said uh, some time ago, these are the ones you get dividends, you get capital income. I be, I have no idea why I actually didn't put in a buy when it hit exactly the 200 period moving average back in the round about the 26th or so of September. It gapped down and it did that. And then it had a huge move up for a leg A. That was just a perfect buy. I missed it. Mea culpa. I just didn't. Uh, I don't know if I was looking. I was waiting to see how it uh, got the resistance. Chapman wave inside track falling axe for resistance. And then it a one to one to the upside. Fabulous action. So, yes, this is a place that I'd said uh, if you're in it in the longer term, I just wouldn't even look at it. I'd just say, okay, fine. Let, just do what you have to do because it is one of the biggies. CVX was the other one. Uh, uh, CVX is Chevron, and Chevron is trading CVX. Right there. It's not as good a pattern, although it's just gone to a leg D in the daily. Uh, it's a leg C in the weekly chart. Not as good a pattern, but actually the pattern says it might not be looking too good right now, but at 167, 
that 18240 June high kind of getting to be a magnet. We'll see. I'll be back. Dow's up 53. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So uh, a question came in about uh, CF Industries and moles. So CF Industries is uh, basically in a fertilizer area. And then you've got Moz, which is the mosaic company. Let me see if I've got it. Yes, they are acting okay today. I, there's something not quite right, and that kind of goes with what I'm looking at in my DBA, which is the DBA Agricultural Fund, making this arch formation. I just, this is what I'm talking about, that we could suddenly get a tremendous deflation um, just like a few days where it looks like everything's coming down and the market just takes off from that. But I think it's transitory. We can't. We can't think of this as totally deflation. It's certain areas, and then they come together, and then it, it fluctuates. So with that in mind, uh, we're looking at uh, the fertilizers. They're in area; they get becoming more interesting. I'd like a little bit more of a pullback, and then we can start looking at them maybe as a potential lock. SLB is mentioned, Slumberger. Yes, this is a fabulous move up. This is a leg C. Rig was the same. We did have rig once. We don't have it now. Rig is holding very nice. This is Transocean uh, offshore. So you can see that the drillers are acting pretty well. And that says to me that at some point, we've got to watch this crude oil very closely because crude oil um, is acting very poorly, right? 
if at any point you start to see crude oil in the 88, it's at 82 right now, 88 to 80, 88 to 90 area, I think all of a sudden things are going to change. So this is a very complex period, and that's the reason why I haven't been aggressively going along um, in in any of the sectors, right? In any of the key ind indexes, I I don't quite trust exactly. I need the I need the price to prove itself. Oh, I never did the VIX. We'll just do the VIX as we're about to wrap up because we're going to go to Steve Rhodes now. That should be an exciting program as always. Very informative, great, great, great technical analysis. You're looking at the VIX index at 3109, up 59 cents. But it is trying to make the arch formation. If by the end of the day, the VIX actually is more closer to the high, which is 3177. Today, if it's closer to 3177 or even